Welcome to my first PHEV review. And what better way to start than checking out the world's best-selling plug-in hybrid. Now this car has something quite unique about it because it has a feature which I believe is going to be in every single car in the future. And what this feature allows is going to allow your car to make money for you. More on that later. My name is Luke, this is The Future is Electric and today we are checking out the Mitsubishi Eclipse PHEV. So firstly, what is a PHEV or a PHEV vehicle? So in a PHEV you have a standard petrol or diesel engine. However, then you also have an electric motor and a small battery and you can essentially run the car in EV mode, albeit the range in that EV mode is significantly less than you get in a full electric car, it is a great way to introduce consumers to the idea of electrification. Now, like all plug-in hybrids, eventually, in this case after 90 days, the car will warn you and will want to turn, will force you to turn the petrol engine on. This is to make sure everything keeps working in that regard. However, you can, as you can see run it in full electric yeah. mode only. So this car shares a lot of common components with the Mitsubishi Outlander. In fact, the underpinnings are pretty much the same. Now this car can also, given the tech inside it, be driven in three modes. We have, my favorite, the only EV electric vehicle mode where the car is running simply on the electric motors and the battery. It has a series hybrid mode where the petrol engine is being used to, through the generator to charge the battery and then you're running using the electric motors. However, in that case, the normal engine, the petrol engine can kick in if need be, if you need more power. And then they have a parallel hybrid mode where it basically does everything for you. It uses the petrol engine, it uses the electric motors and it's all blended together very nicely and very invisible to the driver. They have an interesting save battery mode where the capacity of the battery or the battery level stays the same. So you, it will maintain the charge at whatever you are so that you can use it later on. So the battery pack in this car is significantly smaller than you're going to find in a traditional electric vehicle. In fact, it is 13.8 kilowatt hours. It's comprised of 80 cells and the cells are actually made by a subsidiary of Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi are definitely not new to the electric game. And in fact, the cells are made by Lithium Energy Japan or LEJ. Uh, the battery is warranted for five years or 100,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. So this car being a PHEV has a petrol engine. However, it also has an electric motor or rather two electric motors. So there's an all wheel drive vehicle. There's an electric motor in the front and there is an electric motor driving the rear wheels. Now they are both permanent magnet AC synchronous motors. If you want to learn more about motors, I do go into detail in it in my review of the Renault Zoe. And the, the motors, the front delivers 82 horsepower and 137 newton meters of torque, while the rear delivers 95 horsepower and 137 newton meters of torque. Now the car has a WLTP in electric mode of 45 kilometers. Now, obviously far less than a traditional electric vehicle. However, when you consider that here in Malta or in a small city that the average driving per day is around 20 kilometers, it means that you can use this car without having to charge for definitely a day, um, if not two days for some people. So regen is the ability to recharge the battery when the car is slowing down. And Mitsubishi have gone to town with this feature in this car because there is not only one or two but six different levels of region which are com uh, controlled from these Ferrari-esque paddle shifters you have behind the steering wheel. So this is a great feature especially in a PHEV because it's going to allow drivers who are coming more from the traditional petrol cars to, to understand how electric cars differ and being able to control that region from nearly nothing to quite strong is going to help the transition as users become more familiar with electric vehicles. So this car has two charging modes, an AC charger and a fast DC charger. The DC charger is actually quite a rarity in the PHEV space. Now on AC charging, the car will charge in around four hours at 3.7 kilowatts per hour. 
while on DC charging it can charge in just 45 minutes with a charge speed of 22 kilowatt hours. So the great thing about the Chademo connection is that that is a two-way connection, which is already standardized today, which means that the port can not only take power into the battery, but can also give power back to the house, back to the grid, and there are multiple uses. And this is what I mean that the car will actually in the future make you money. So the problem with the grid is that there are areas where there is high demand and low demand. When there is high demand, the energy supplier stands to benefit from the fact that people's cars can essentially feed energy into the grid. So future case scenario, you'd arrive home at 6 p.m., you'd plug in the car, not to charge, but to feed energy into the grid. You'd do this between 6 and say 9 p.m. when energy is at its peak, energy demand is at its peak. And say at around 2 a.m. when the energy demand drops, the grid will feed back the energy it's taken from you back in the battery. But of course, you get paid for offering this service. So finally, your car can actually make you back some money. This is something that's being used already in Denmark, it's being used in Australia, and it's slowly gonna stifle to many, many countries around the world because frankly, everyone stands to gain from the energy supplier to the consumer alike. Just an interesting point about the vehicle to house technology. This 13.8 kilowatt battery, there's enough juice in here to power an entire Maltese flat for an entire day on average. What's more, if you run the petrol engine, which runs the generator, which charges the battery, you have enough power to run a house for 10 days. I'd like to thank IML Malta for letting us take out the Mitsubishi Eclipse today. Shout out to Peter for helping me out with all the technical. And please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like this content. I got plenty more reviews already on the channel and more to come. And if you weren't convinced yet, I hope you now agree that the future is electric.